employees who declined to be interviewed remember her as warm and a caring person. Her mother called her oldest daughter beautiful. She says she was babysitting when another family member called to tell her about the shooting. A deadly shooting in South Baltimore. An MTA bus driver killed while doing her job. The search for the suspect still ongoing. Forty-year-old Elaine Jackson was a kind, funny, and caring person. Most importantly, she was a mother of four to children ranging in ages seven to twenty-two years of age. In 2019, Elaine won the lottery for fifty thousand dollars when she decided to play her lucky numbers after a trip to the mall with her daughters. She told the lottery that she planned on taking a family vacation with some of her winnings. Elaine was also a bus driver for the Maryland Transit Administration for four years and was considered a warm, caring, and valued member of the team. Around 5 p.m. on October 17th, Baltimore police were called to the 1500 block of Washington Boulevard to the MDOT MTA Bush Bus Operations Division lot in South Baltimore for a report of a shooting. Upon arrival, they would find an unresponsive woman in the parking lot suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. An MTA bus driver gunned down in the parking lot of one of its operations centers. Baltimore police now say they don't believe this was a random act of violence. The victim was identified as 40-year-old Elaine Jackson, who was taken to the University of Maryland's Shock Trauma Center, where she died of her injuries. Baltimore police told Fox 45 News investigators they believe the homicide was domestic-related, although a suspect was not initially identified. A few days later after her senseless death, they released the photo and name of 53-year-old Leon Douglas Hill. A look into the history of the connection between Elaine and Hill revealed that Elaine went to court a little over a week ago and requested a restraining order against Hill for stalking and harassment. The two were both employed with the MTA as bus drivers, and she worried about seeing Hill at the Maryland Transit Administration Bush Division facility near Carroll Park in southwest Baltimore, where they both reported to work. Four days after a Baltimore County District Court judge granted her request for a temporary peace order, Elaine was gunned down in the Bush Division parking lot. That Friday, Baltimore police said an arrest warrant had been issued charging Hill with first-degree murder in the killing. Law enforcement agencies began actively searching for Hill, declining to answer questions Friday afternoon about Hill's employment, including whether he was placed on leave or otherwise disciplined. In her written statement requesting the restraining order, Elaine said she rekindled a friendship with Hill in March or April of this year. She said they had some differences in the past, and he basically was asking for her forgiveness. But in July, she started distancing herself again. She wrote, I noticed that he wanted more, and he knew I was in a relationship. Hill started harassing her several weeks ago, relentlessly calling and texting, demanding money and threatening her. She checked a box on the application, indicating she was being stalked. He also stated that if he can't have me, no one will. In response to a question about whether he had weapons, Elaine wrote, not that I know of. Court records show that Elaine was granted a temporary peace order and directed to appear in court Friday morning to argue for an extension. The order was dismissed when she failed to appear at the hearing three days after her death. A Baltimore County police officer tried to serve Hill with the peace order last week, but records show the attempt was unsuccessful. It was unclear whether additional attempts were made. According to the order, he was prohibited from contacting Elaine in order to stay away from her home. Over the summer, she notified Hill she was no longer interested in having contact with him. She complained that he kept calling and texting demanding money from her in exchange for not telling her significant other about their previous relationship. On October 12th, Jackson explains Hill followed her to her car demanding to talk with her, threatening to tell her significant other everything about them. Since then, she writes, he had been calling her from blacked out numbers and reaching out to her new interest, telling him things that weren't true. Jackson writes Hill stated, if he can't have me, no one will. Recent attempts to reach her family were unsuccessful, but many within the community were affected by this senseless act of violence, especially her coworkers. At the Bush Division facility Friday afternoon, the gated parking lot was quiet. A bunch of white and gold balloons, including one shaped like a giant E, broke free from their tether and floated slowly toward the sky. 
everyone in Baltimore City, if they have any ounce of compassion, they feel for this family. Many Baltimoreans can only imagine the pain Elaine Jackson's family is feeling right now. It still breaks my heart. It just really breaks my heart that this lady lost her life because of more than likely something that could have been resolved. The police department is now asking the public to call detectives at Crime Stoppers if they know anything. The homicide, one of at least 274 in the city so far this year, has gotten Governor Larry Hogan's attention. He tweeted, we are all grieving. And the First Lady and I extend our condolences to Elaine Jackson's family and all of her colleagues at MTA. This MCA employee told us he's known Miss Jackson for decades. Yeah. But she was a great person, lovely person. I enjoyed working with her. I knew her since she was a child. So, you know, it's really kind of hard that this unfortunate situation. WJZ spoke with this woman who says she knows the pain this family is experiencing. She said a few months ago her cousin was shot in a domestic related incident but survived. She said the fear hovered over her family until police found the suspect. It makes you paranoid a little bit to know that he's still out and he can hurt someone else. As the search continues for the killer, she wants people to step up and say something. The no snitching and all that. It, it will be your family. It will hit home one day. It will be right at your front door. And, and what are you going to do? You want the public's help. You want the, you want the public's help. You know, it, it could be you one day. MTA released a statement saying they were grateful for Elaine's commitment to providing critical transit service. And they offered their deepest condolences to her family. They then went on to say that safety of its employees and riders is their highest priority. Counseling services are being provided for its staff. So far in 2022, there have been 274 homicides in Baltimore, compared to 267 at this time last year. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott said police are working to bring her justice. The investigation is ongoing.